In the world of over-optioned cars like the S, SE, SL, XL, XLE, XLR, SER, SRV, XSTR, RXL, and likely every other letter in existence, there are plenty of people like you and people like me that would rather pick up a base model vehicle and modify it as we want to. We're smarter than them. We don't need no infotainment system. I got my own doubled in, all right? From 2006, okay? It's got the turn knob and the aux cable in the front. I don't even have to redirect that thing to the center console. I just send it right out of the front. I don't even need to worry about that infotainment system. I got my own. Certain manufacturers already do this, and cars like the Ford Focus ST1, which came with pretty much nothing, except four wheels, a steering wheel, and some windows. But over time, we realized that as we picked up that ST1, we just thought that we were gonna do better with it than they were. We kind of realized that maybe we should have just gotten the nicer variant because it comes with cool things. Things like nice seats. Things like not a hideous center console. Just, you know, basic things, you know? Maybe we realize that the double din doesn't fit like we want to, huh, huh? Uh, cruise control, that'd be pretty cool. Crank windows are great, except when it's 110 degrees out. So we end up contemplating life choices because we thought we were going cheap was worth it because we were just gonna do it ourselves when it definitely was probably not the way to go. So that begs the argument, it begs the question, are base model cars worth it? I'm Alex from Fitment Industries, Alex at FI on the Gram, and in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about just that. Oh yes, you're welcome to a question you didn't know that you had to ask. And today we're answering that question you didn't know you needed to ask, which is that. Welcome to the Twilight Zone. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button, because that allows us to keep making banging videos like this. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, and suspension, that whole plug, we also got a wheel giveaway going on with Koenig, check out fitmentindustries.com. It allows us to continuously make great content like this because guess what? Air conditioning don't run on this hairline. Air conditioning don't run on this, these terrible jokes that you get to hear every day from us. It's painful, but it's worth it because you don't get to argue back, which means the six people that enjoy the jokes, me and you, baby. It's just us. Base model cars sit in a place that makes everyone a little uneasy. It's literally the cheapest car a manufacturer could legally make. They, they, they really aren't looking out for your wallet more than they just, you know, they're looking out for the legality of actually putting that car onto the road. It just happens to also be cheap. Those cars are like a cat's ass hair away from being illegal because of the lack of tech and safety car manufacturers throw into these base models. Doesn't even go into the talk about all the features that you actually end up losing by going into a base model car. You ever get in a car and find a button layout in the center console only they find them filled up with a little a bunch of empty like plastic cover pieces and no icon. That's like the car dealership saying to you, maybe you should have just worked harder. Damn! And that is kind of just the way that it feels. And if you think that's exclusive to just your base model cars, you'd be happy to know that the Porsche GT3 RS also features dummy buttons right in the center console. $200,000 car. Dummy buttons, let that one sink in for a minute. The problem with thinking affordably about cars like these is that many of those necessity add-ons won't actually break the bank for that many people. Power windows being $200 more over the course of a five-year loan or even a proper automatic transmission for your daily driver will probably do you good. After all, cars are just like your bed. It's not something that you're gonna wanna go to the bottom of the barrel if you can avoid it. In fact, pro tip for me here that if you're looking to get into a base model car, not for being an enthusiast, but just actually need a car, I would actually just recommend turning away from the dealership. Go to your nearest Sunday morning breakfast restaurant, the one that doesn't have a Facebook page or a website, the one that has like the same six people that are roughly the age of 62 to 79 that work there and is constantly lit with that awkward lighting and that green checkered tabletop counter that they've had for 27 years. Go in there, find the local magazine that has the classified section and go find yourself a nice Buick owned by one person that is also 89 years old that no longer drives because she's literally unable to because the DMV won't give her her license back. Buy that car because I can promise you you're gonna enjoy that one a whole heck of a lot more than getting a brand new car in a funky color because you think the color of your car is gonna make the biggest difference even though you have crank windows. You'll thank us later. Base model new vehicles aren't going to be as lovely as you think even if they are new. For the enthusiasts out there, unless we're modifying legitimately everything in the car, 
we'd be a little hesitant for you. And I'm not entirely sure if you getting crank windows is like the go-to version of saving money if you're planning on putting an intake and a tune on it. So does that mean base models are a bad idea? No, absolutely not. Some base models out there come with pretty much everything you need out of the gate exactly how a new enthusiast would need them. If you need an example, just go look at Volkswagen's models and tell me that that just isn't about perfect. You get a decent interior. You get a nice exterior, you get nothing crazy, but it's good looking. You can still modify it right out of the gate without having to worry about a car that will resell for $14. It's a good platform and some people do it really well. Volkswagen's been known to do their entry level cars very well. Now, base model cars do have a home. They're usually for people's first cars or for those that know which base model car to buy. If you're unsure on if the one you found is the right base model car, ask yourself this. If I modify this, will it get rid of the inconvenience of money that I saved by not getting it out of the gate? That question will actually save yourself a ton of headaches, fights, and tears, we promise you. Because if you can live without it, and you're okay with living without it for the sake of the inconvenience, then just do it. So what was the first base model car that you bought? Let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to check out fitmentindustries.com. If you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, also, Koenig giveaway if you're interested. We have a way for your set of wheels. Go nuts, description link below. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. We will see you later. Peace.